Well, hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome to another installment of our Color Edge Creative Mastermind webinar series. My name is Kevin Burke. I'm a business development manager here at AZO, and I'll be your host today. We're hosting an ongoing series of these webinars featuring AZO Color Edge power users who are also recognized leaders in their profession, including photography, print, filmmakers, animation, visual effects, and post-production. Um, the Creative Mastermind Series is brought to you by AZO, the makers of AZO Color Edge self-calibrating color accurate monitors, which are preferred by most discerning, the most discerning creative people everywhere, excuse me. Um, today, we're pleased to have a, the team of filmmakers from Black Milk Studios who are working on a passion project called One Minute Worlds, which is a sci-fi anthology that spans the vast cosmic arena of the universe to tell jaw-dropping short stories that focus on a turning point in some long forgotten alien culture. I'll save the details for them to tell you about the rest of the project, but they're using Azo Color Edge monitors in their work, so I'm guessing it'll look exactly the way you want to see it. After our guests tell us all about their awesome project, we'll open it up to questions from the audience and uh, if you could uh, please send us your questions in the chat function on Zoom, that would be great. And then um, we'll try to get, all, get to all the questions uh, at the end of the presentation. Um, so without further ado, uh, welcome to the One Minute Worlds team of filmmakers. That's McGregor, Adriana Sue, Rory Robinson, Ozan Biron, and Phil Galat. Hello, everyone. Hello. 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 Good morning, Kevin. Good morning. Hello. <laughs> so um, I think uh, Matt had another slide there that we were going to put up with uh, uh, the quick um, outline as well. Matt, if you could put that up. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, um, the inspiration behind One Minute Worlds, as well as uh, then we'll just talk about each of the um, the portions of the project, the, the pre-production, all the planning, um, and then the actual production itself, and then the production work that they're doing to bring this uh, out into the world. And like I mentioned, after that, we'll, uh, we'll open that to uh, questions and answers at the end. So um, go ahead. I think, Mac, uh, we were going to go to you first. So oh, thank um, you. Take it away. <laughs> yeah, well, Kevin, uh, so I think this started like we <clears throat> We mostly do commercials, right? Like commercials are, it's a good job and, and happy to be busy. But when you do commercials, you're most of the time you're just working to create somebody else's vision, um, make make it a reality, right? So I think of, of, it's, it's years of working and it's like, hey, wouldn't it be nice just to be your own boss? Do do literally exactly what you what you want to create, just your own little world and 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 be in charge of it and so obviously <clears throat> we all started doing sorts and and that's that's really a passion project for everybody but it's like hey what if we all get together and we do something short because <clears throat> even short films are short but it's like hey let's just make it a minute two minutes long make it as short as possible and but just your vision just whatever you want to do a uh, snippet of a of a world you always wanted to to bring up to life and I think that's how, how this project started. So I reached out to Rory, I <clears throat> reached out to Oz, and he said, hey guys, uh, would you be interested in, in doing this? And of course, I mean, through the years, you collect a, a folders and of inspiration and, and just ideas that you don't know where they're gonna go, but is that, hey, we'll be, I'd love to get lost in this world. And I think that's where the One Minute Worlds um, anthology Idea. project started i don't know that that was my my thing i don't know but rory i know they're more talented than me and they work more than <laughs> yeah. me so it, uh, was, it was great that they found the time to do this i i i, I uh, mac reached out to me um we've worked together many times on commercials and he shot several, several of my short films and stuff and um um, it's the first time having him as a boss, actually, which is funny. <laughs> um, I don't he, he the, the boss, but okay. No, well, he's, he's, he, he, cre he created this project, and but also he's a cinematographer, so there's also like I'm his boss while he's my boss. It's so funny. <laughs> it's never it's, it's interesting to have. But no, he, he created this opportunity to do um, 
um, sort of almost anything you want, but with uh, in these kind of guide, guide rails that they all have to like complement each other a little bit and but not overlap each other too much, but feel like all right, they're they're sort of achieving each 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 of the stories is achieving its own thing, but they're compatible with each other, and and they have to be. Um, what were the what were the guide rails? I mean, we, we want to we want to explore just different universes um, that we've we've each of us have never seen before in, on film, and it's sort of like what what have I not got to do that I've been trying to do for ages? And there's a specific mythology, um, um, Lovecraftian mythology that I've never got to put on screen. So I just I I absolutely wanted to do um, something that would let me throw some in imagery I've wanted to see on screen for a long, long time since childhood, really, on um, yeah. the screen. And it's very hard to get, um, like, you know, like a feature film budget to do these kind of ideas. But um, but to do a short version of it and keep the production value at feature level, you can sort of, it's, it's very difficult, but you can kind of do that for a minute or two minutes maybe, but I couldn't do 90 minutes of this stuff. So I think it was a really good idea to, have um, have these be short bursts of ideas that just let let you do kind of like um, Mobius kind of sketch ideas, like they're like almost like Mobius strips, uh, which I think was really good. Yeah, same thing for me. I mean, uh, Mac asked me to come into this world and kind of get to express yourself about it. I mean, just so short and so simple where you can almost throw anything into it. Um, I mean, we all had our own inspirations and ideas in creating these little stories to it. Um, and I come from the world of car commercials. I do a lot of aggressive stuff. I worked with Mac. Mac has um, shot a lot of my stuff over the years. Um, and just as for me, at least, this is a nice change in pace because I got to kind of put the aggressive stuff to, uh, aside and more showcase more of a more of a creative side. But this is less uh, less car oriented and more storytelling. But very small, small stuff, and mainly it's be inspired by like where I live and what I do and just things that really gravitate to, towards me and what I think hopefully other people think as well. Um, but that's pretty much what brought me into and got me excited about it and how we kind of jumped into it. And I'm honored to be a part of it, Mac. <laughs> like, and I'm, you know, it's going to be something that's going to be really cool and hopefully everyone will enjoy it. And, and just to be clear, we're, we're all at various stages of um, like, um, we, we got slowed down by COVID. So yeah, I wasn't yeah. going to shoot yet. Um, we're in the rest of us are on post and there's a Mac has another one uh, that he wants to wants to shoot still um, but we, we I'm I'm in deep in VFX right now so the shorts are not finished we're, we're muscling our way through it but but there's <laughs> there's a way to go yet muscling is it's the right word choice <laughs> there Barry <laughs> <laughs> making it happen one way or another right <laughs> yeah <laughs> right so we started this last year and it's like, all right, let's let's try to pull this off um, in between jobs, or or I, I took three months off just just to focus on this, um, because I think for brain sanity is good just to to explore your creativity. Sorry for my broken English, by the way. Um, and and so we're still in in the middle of this uh, of this big project. We've shot three already. We're about to start shooting fourth. Orson's Orson's film. And, and in, in yeah, Canada, I think where you're allowed so to we're... do stuff, right? <laughs> yeah, in Canada, where it's much safer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. Um, and yeah, it, it was a little bit of freedom for everybody. Obviously, we don't have a hundred million dollars to fund this, but is that hey, if we keep it short, or at least that was the idea. If we keep it short, we can comp comprise the the budget that we have and make it look expensive or, or at least yeah. good production value right production high production wow. value that's the key for yeah. sure. <laughs> also there's a on like when it's low budget as well to a certain point it actually helps makes you think outside of the box and kind of think of creative ways of making it so it actually has a an advantage to it to some ways it makes you rethink and how you execute stuff especially for me um, obviously budget is one thing, but just kind of makes you reapproach things in a different way of going back to like, how could we do this? And sometimes it comes better. Sometimes it's better not to have so much money to a certain point, creativity wise, at least for me. So makes it sometimes, makes sometimes it kind it's of better for me to have for, enough for, money though. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. But it would be a good thing as well. So yeah, yeah, I'm just 
Kind of like going back to film school, right? With no budget. Yeah. Oh, no, it's always film school. It's constant. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> because like, like every time I do a short, I've done a bunch of shorts now and every time it's been, I know I have to do 80% of this before I start. But there's twenty percent where I'm like I have no fucking idea how to do. Excuse my French. Can I? Can we curse here? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea how to do this. I have no care. idea how to do this, 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 and this. But I'll figure it out. And and knowing all the stuff around it means that you sort of have created a space where you can still experiment and do something new. Yeah. Um, so it's so it's not repetitive. You're not just repeating yourself. But there's always a new challenge to it. For the for and there's this, also there's control, there's creative control as well. You have aspect yeah. on everything. Like in advertising, you're you're pretty much, it just comes down to like, where do you want the couch with advertising? You're kind of puppeted into a certain degree. But with this type of project, you, you're pretty much free reigns to do almost what you want. And what Roy's kind of saying, it's just like you get to tap into every single stages of it and kind of follow through as it's your own vision. Um, that's what kind of like gravitates me towards these type of stuff is you just get to express yourself in any way um and it's hopefully you know other people kind of dig the same type of stuff which is kind of cool so yeah well we're basically just doing the kind of stuff that we we, we would like to see on screen yeah that, that we're not getting to see on screen in other people's movies or in other people's projects so it feels like it, it, that was sort of half of the idea as well was to go what do what, like what, what what movies are they not making what what, yeah. are, what worlds are they not exploring i want to i want to i want to see this on screen i have never seen this okay so um, I want to see some images. Can someone show me? <laughs> Matt, do you want to start with your initial uh, inspirations? Yeah, I can start with, with some inspiration here. So actually I have here, this, this is a book called We Japanese, and it's almost 100 years old. I don't know if, if anyone has seen it. And it's, it's written on this amazing rice paper. This was a big inspiration because every page is a different story from, from all um Japanese culture and that kind of set up the mood for let's see how do I share the screen here share in screen it's gonna share everyone can see my computer now <coughs> let's see if this works um so I, I, I directed two shorts called deal and red and this is deal the one that it set up in like middle ages Japan but with uh with a strong fantasy um attached to it and and it almost started with with just basic concepts like these images they're taking a little bit to refresh um i've been to japan a few times and and obviously i'm i'm in love with japan at least from a foreign perspective it's it's an amazing place to go on vacation and i remember this this is near mount fuji there's this because mount fuji is a volcano right there's these caves and they have shrines in them i don't know if you can see a little shrine in there but you just venture in the forest and find these amazing things. And what is that thing called in, in, in Japanese culture where almost every item or creature has a spirit in it? Which is very Miyazaki, by the way, but I, I, I realized about this later. But anyway, I had this folder of inspira in, in, inspirational. inspirational images. This is like a 1937 um, uh, Native American um, illustration book as well that I had. Uh, but anyway, and this is from Ran. Um, I wanted to do something that that had to do a little bit with that spirit of 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 those trips to Japan that I've made, and I've always wanted to do a, a fight to death, like choreograph some some crazy stunts uh, that feels visceral. And is that all right? How can I put this together in under like two minutes, and and just just create you know something that I've, I've i've always wanted to do and that was i think genesis for for yeah. for deal which i'll i'll we'll, we'll show a little bit on how we ended up shooting this because we did not end up going to japan we went to iceland uh because of some very good reasons but that's that's how i found the inspiration for this one um, <laughs> will i do ice now yeah. yeah go for it all right let me steal the screen um Wait one second. The screen is stolen. What about that? There you go. Okay. Um, so for me, um, the thing I really wanted to do was a fusion of um, of uh, Lovecraftian imagery and hard sci-fi. So um, 
so we, we, we were setting each of the stories. This is a very boring desktop right now because I'm not showing images yet, but um, we're setting the stories uh, on different worlds. And I, 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 I picked a, a frozen ice planet. So we're trying to figure out um, where in the universe, what, what the aesthetic might be, how, how frozen and barren it could be. And, and we're just throwing imagery back and forth to find out what the environment could be. And we settled on Iceland. They shot obviously oblivion there. We settled on Iceland as as the most the the, the perfect primordial place, not just because it was perfect for my short, but because it had uh, it had you could drive fifty miles from snow and go to a chart over kind of crater, or you could see greenery a hundred miles away from that. You could drive to a different planet the next day, um, which which allowed us to to pick um, both my short and um, and major components of, of deal um, in the same country. So we 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 start of we start to to investigate the environment, and then and then there's there's a bunch of um, hard sci-fi technical gear in in the short. There's a there's a kind of a um, prospector type character um, who is um, um, I, I was looking at different sci-fi films that had like uh, heavy duty uh, hard hard um, hard body kind of costumes so like uh memories um magnetic rose was a big inspiration for me for design there's this guy mike andrew nash um who's a is a really talented uh <coughs> hard surface designer and a friend he wasn't available for the short but he his, his some of his work is a big inspiration so we we're looking at doing, using wetsuits for the costume with at base and and military gear and um and other sci-fi inspirations so this is a this is a fictional a poncho from a model kit set for aliens that was never in any of the movies, but design is pretty cool. Um, so we're just looking at what 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 we could afford to make, how we could do a kind of a, a unique um, sci-fi character design and execute it without the money to do it properly <laughs> was the main thing. And then yeah. it was, we were, it was lucky. A book. We were that? lucky that well that Rory, we were lucky that we were able to collaborate with really great VFX artists that helped us pull it off. Well, but maybe Roy, now it's a time to introduce like the good uh, 3D printing was a key element on this production. And I think that we all yeah. had fun doing that. And there's there's a lot to talk about it. Yeah, I mean, um, I have a whole, the, 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 most of what I'm going to be talking about is the prep phase, actually, because basically the shoot went really well. Maybe I've wrote tinted lenses. I really enjoyed the shoot and it was fun and it was short. It was like five days of shooting. Probably, probably, probably other people that had had a hard time on the shoot than me because I had I had uh, the whole thing pre vised out. So we just sort of collect from the, driving from location to location, having fun and collecting the footage I need. Um, so so the shoot itself was fun, but the prep for me was a nightmare. <laughs> it was really difficult because the part that I'd never done before on a short was was I'd never done prop making before. I never built a costume. And so what we needed to do for this, um, we had we had spaceships and there's a, there's some um, uh, creature stuff as well that, that I, I'm not gonna go into in this presentation, but um, there's, there's spaceships, I've done spaceships before. Spaceships are fun, I love spaceships. Um, and I got, I got the, a, a fantastic modeler, Andreas Maninka, who's, who was, he, he modeled the, um, the spinner in Blade Runner 2049. He's, he built a spaceship 3D model for me based on a, Based on a fantastic concept from um, uh, a Chinese designer named Dezu. Uh, so was the design. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. So uh, it's on the main time, basically we started. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, so I just want to say really quickly, it's basically like everything I love in design in in vehicle design, which is what it looks like. It's it's built for purpose, real world design with no flourishes. It's not slick. It's not it's not uh, airbrush looking. It's just it just looks like. Uh, a heavy duty vehicle designed to uh, take take wear and tear. And, and I just love this kind of stuff. It's just exactly aesthetically my kind of stuff. So what we need to do was once I found this this design was find um, find a, a, a way to have a, a costume design for the main character that was kind of compatible with this and, and felt like it was of, of a piece with it because this was kind of a big ins aesthetic inspiration for the technical look of, of everything in the, in the short. So that, that became, sorry, do you want to talk, Mike? No, 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 I, I was just, not, it's all good. Okay, cool. Um, and, uh, uh, we, and just to just to clarify, Rory uh, directed Ice, um, which is the short he's speaking about. 
Mac with the DP for that one. And then Mac was talking about deal, which he directed. Um, yeah. yeah. So we've, we've shot three so far, um, deal, red and ice. So ice is mine. Um, and yeah, Mac was not just, uh, not just, not just the DP. I mean, it's, it's, you, it's, no, it's DP, but... we're producers and put the whole thing together. So it's, 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 it's not, it's, <laughs> it's like, he's like, like DP is not just DP. It's, it's obviously incredibly crucial, but, right. but it wasn't just DP as well. <laughs> but, no, um, but what's funny, Rory, is that we started this as like, Hey, let's make them short so that we can finish them quick. <laughs> and of course we figure out the way to make the most, uh, needs for props the hardest <laughs> locations you can think of we went up yeah. we ended up going to the top of a glacier in iceland and yeah, it's not easy a, a glacier in a snowstorm storm yeah <laughs> i think we should be doing short films just in a coffee shop <laughs> just boyfriend and girlfriend talking to each other and that's it I mean, there the was a point year. where we were we, we were driving up in this in this like heavy duty uh, what would what's that vehicle called that we're the cat vehicle thing what are they called that's uh do you have the photos? Do you want to show them, or I, I can do that? I'll show that in a bit. I, I guess we'll get to that point. But I'm like, like, it looks like we're literally driving into the base of the thing, where, <laughs> where we're going to find the, the deformed bodies. Like it literally <laughs> looked like we were, we were the, we were the guys driving up there to, to, to in the aftermath of the event. It's OVFX involved in this. This is real, right? Yeah. No, I mean, but really, like, like, like what, what, what? I'll go through. I'll go through all the, all the, all design and, and stuff. Because that was like yeah, the biggest, so, so some did, stuff. Uh, the biggest kind of challenge for me on, on doing this short film. I've never done props before. So we started with a, a friend of ours, Luca. I can't pronounce her surname, but uh, but she, she 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 did the initial concept designs and then came with us on the shoot to help us put the costume together uh, in the end. But she did. Uh, yeah, Aiden. No, Aiden. Luca, you mean? And Aiden. Aiden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Luca did the initial concept art for the costume, and, and some of them started a little too fantastical. But then we sort of quickly-ish knuckled down on a more heavy-duty, like industrial look to it, uh, which 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 was sort of like trying to guide it on a track closer to the uh, to the. Um, you have some images you can show us. Um, which one? Oh, sorry, I thought I was sharing my. Yeah, screen. the early concepts. Yeah. You, oops. That's so Rory's idea. sword takes place a, in okay. a nice planet, right? What's what's the the two-line synopsis for it? Um, so the story is about this um, this uh, contractor working for a um, intergalactic uh, terraforming terraforming operation whose whose um, whose job is to scout out alien worlds and see which ones have life on them and which ones are, are barren that they can take over to terraform. So he is basically scouting for life on an alien world. So these are very early. Uh, um, concept arts that we were it started a little fantastical and and maybe Tron legacy ish I guess, and then we That's just good. what's that? Good though, John Lucas great. Yeah, no, she's awesome. Uh, and then uh, we sort of quickly honed in on a more heavy duty technical industrial look to sort of guide it more towards where the the spaceship design was already at, um, so that the two kind of felt a bit more in sync. Um, so these were like the first, the first batch of designs, and then, and then, um, then w the process uh, was. These are in the wrong order. Uh, so the process, we we had to get the actor scanned, and uh, we started on. Uh, wait, let me just get back here. Right, basically, you, you've got this the, a really nice concept, but we're not. A, how do we make that reality, right? So we had to scan the actor um, first, so that we could build the the costume, customized. By the way, I just want to say that Lee, the actor, is amazing, and he put up with us sending him to. <laughs> uh, and he's, and, and he's, and he's, and he's a built dude, so he makes me look embarrassing. I look like David the Hood next. <laughs> Uh, so here we have to do a 3D scan of, of, of the actor. So he's in London. So he had to go to a, a scanning store. Uh, can you guys see this? Is this yeah, this? perfect. So he, he, he had to go to a, a 3D scanning store to get scanned in London. And then they sent us um, the scan of him. So, so the, the, why did he have to be scanned? So the, 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 we wanted to, we had to build a helmet and a costume and we had to fit it, but we couldn't fit it. We couldn't fit it on him because our budget was so low that we couldn't fly him over to LA for prep. So it was. It cost us less to scan his body and then build the props digitally 
to fit on him um, in, 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 in the costume design process. God. So, Can you show uh, us the, the props, the actual suit that you built? Um, yeah, so let me just go. So we started then, we brought this guy, Andrew Entwistle in to design um, the costume and backpack. First, before we had the scan, we started on a generic kind of uh, male scan that he had anyway. I, I don't know what it's from, but but he just started using that to, to help design the components. Uh, this is Andrew Lee Entwistle, and he's in London too. Which um, I saw him sign on. Hi, Andrew. Oh, cool. Well, hi, Andrew. <laughs> um, so initially, we were looking at uh, one of the other references had a poncho. We, we were looking at that as potential. In case the costume didn't turn out well, we could hide it in the poncho. Um, so that was, and when you're doing low budget stuff, you have to, you have, to have a backup plan. Um, <laughs> so it, we, we started with like um, designs that were painted over in 2D and, and, and roughed over and roughed out in, in ZBrush and just gave me, there's some props he had, to, he had to design as well that I 3D printed. Um, and then it just became a, a, a like mix and matching components and paint overs and choosing details we love of, of things he's testing out. And then gradually, slowly refining it bit by bit until it has the right look and feel. Um, and uh, just marking over, over the areas that are not quite there yet and not detailed enough or and you can see, you can see if you if you look at here, it's a little bit like because it's done roughly in ZBrush, like the, it's a little bit roughed out. You can see the like the brush strokes even on the on the on the sculpts, but that doesn't matter at that point because because you're just blocking it out. And then I just mark the parts that I really like, and, and go from there, um, just kind of cleaning up until we eventually get to a point where what we had to do is 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 design a model that can be three D printed, and none of us have ever done this before, so we have to figure out. Like the tolerances, um, here's a pretty close to finished version. Uh, the, we had to figure out the tolerances of, of the parts and how uh, oh, there's like an intersection problem. Um, and then and then figure out how it would fit onto his body and how all the parts would fit together. So you can see we're, we're building the straps to, to fit to his body contours there so that the, the backpack will fit his shoulders because he's got, he's got broad shoulders. So it's not gonna, like it, it won't fit any, everyone. So we have to sort of design it to, to work for this guy. Um, so then, go from let me just get there. so you actually had to manufacture 3d print the helmet yeah my uh, yeah, I'll, sh I'll show you now the right uh, so that that was the whole point yep yeah yeah wow. so um let me get this in the right order so i i've been test 3d printing anyway and so these were like initial components i printed just to proof of concept the process of, of, of printing to see if, it, 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 if it's gonna work and how, how it'll look. Like this is a rover from my last film, um, my last feature film, The Last Day of the Mars that I printed just, just to see if, if you can do hard surface parts in this thing. And, and this is the sky bike, the little part that I test painted to see if I can do weathering and blinking from my short. Yeah, very good. Um, and, and so we, uh, we, we decided early on, Mac, Mac uh, purchased um, a Raise 3D Pro 2 Plus 3D printer um, which is a filament printer, and it's it's a it's a it's a heavy duty industrial machine. It's it can print an one foot by one foot by two feet tall, so we can we could print big parts, and um, it uses a lot of energy. It's very loud and it generates a lot of heat. <laughs> <laughs> but awesome. uh, <laughs> so I think it's very expensive to run as well, electricity wise. But uh, how much time um, did it take to let's say for the helmet in the helmet's case? How long? How long did the 3D printer take to actually create oh, that? We, we, we split it into multiple parts that fitted together. So each of the parts, like it maybe it took, uh, uh, maybe it was a week and a half to print the helmet, one helmet altogether. Mm -hmm. uh, so what first, what first we did was we, we 3D printed uh, uh, Lee, the actor's head. So we could, when we printed the other parts, we could fit them onto them. And we would do things like we would do head fittings of all the components make sure that they plot it together like i'm just troubleshooting the problem here where they intersect i find intersection problems uh as a, as we were designing it so that we could find how they would fit together and stuff like that um so it, it had to be split in different sections but each of those parts is printed separately um, because if you print in it, it, you print in one part altogether, it, it um it wastes a lot of uh, you, have, you have to use uh, supports and it wastes a lot of Material that supports it to do that. 
And then we had to do stuff like we would um, see problems where he would rip his ears off if we didn't widen the tape. Right. Yeah, because yeah. one thing is having a nice design, the other one is is it going to kill our actor? <laughs> we would have been lost if we didn't have animal pets. And he didn't have ears. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Is it um, and even the version, like uh, my, uh, this, this the version of the helmet that we printed, I had to test print. I had to put it on myself when we when we got it made, but it hurt my ears to take it off. Even even when we widened the base, it would like like be sore for an hour. After. So we'd be pr printing test parts like this constantly, and then fitting them together um, over the helmet. This is the printer. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's how slow it goes. So like this is this was a 48 hour project. And you can see the support underneath there that holds it up. You have to design it so that the those supports are in place when you turn Wait, Rory, I think you need to lower the volume of the video. It's just too loud. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so sorry. sorry about it. Um, when you tear the supports off, it leaves a really ugly, ragged, kind of messy, uh, messy, dirty surface behind. So you have to design it so the supports are in places you don't see. This is all the stuff you have to figure out when you Um, so basically, so you printed the whole spacesuit, which traditionally would have cost, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, and obviously, the design was amazing and the quality was good. Uh, not didn't cost that much, but it took a lot of time from you, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, here's, here's a sort of an overview of all the parts I had printing and all the printers I had going at the one time. So, this is to the point where I fucked up the paint and I had to redo the paint on that and I was really distressed. <laughs> I had to print two helmets. There's a, a prop kind of scanner thing. There's the printed head. Second printed helmet because you have to do a backup just in case. Um, parts for the printed. This is my office where I am right now. Uh, test parts I was painting, all the painting equipment. Printer one, printing a part. I think, Rory, you could show the final product for a second, just so people understand what we were doing here. Uh, well, I'll get, I'll get there in a moment. I'll get there in a moment. Okay. So I had three printers running simultaneously while I'm painting everything else up. And, um, <laughs> and uh, printer wash station, and then the concept art. We hadn't got it modeled at that point. We were just figuring it, you know. And then this is the backpack. So a lot of stuff going in a very small space. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I then had to um, take them out into my back garden and start painting and weathering these. And I'd never done this before, really, either. So it became a challenge to figure out how to paint and weather parts. Like I'm testing, test painting pieces like this to see if it looks like metal or plastic still. Printing all oh, well, the parts. The paint job was excellent. Though. Yeah, it was amazing. Um, let me just get ahead of this. So I, I would test paint, paint individual parts that I'd test printed earlier that I don't need so I could see if they would work. Um, and then my office became just this industrial wasteland. <laughs> just a complete mess. Just horrible. <laughs> just. Um, but then, then we got to a point where the, it started sort of started coming together uh, and the parts were fitting together and we used LED lights to light the helmet and and I had um, I had um, a visor um, <coughs> um, was called vacuum formed out of acrylic I actually had a couple of different options for that as well and once that fitted on LED um, so we had um, multiple visors made out, uh, and then the props started to come together, and then it started to look good. Shout out to John for thank you for you know helping us get those visors. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and and so we finally got to a point where we were starting to fit um, the props together with tape <laughs> because we didn't want to print them yet, and. Um, we we tested it out on, a, on another actor who was as close to the build of our actor as we could find. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Nice. And uh, then finally, we had like a pretty good package of pieces that we were ready to take 
on me first, roughly, and then on the real actor for a test drive. Uh, so here's the finished costume. And here's the first time we took it out on the street. Now these are, there's two modes. They're, if you press them, yeah. they'll dim a little, which might be easier. Yeah, let's do that now. It's way rough. Yeah. Right, no, but, it's still it's the same, no? No, it's a little no, dimmer. It's dimmer. Okay. It's much better. Do they dim more? No, that's okay. it. That's it. All right, let's go around. We've got lights and everything on this. Can you breathe okay, please? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, is it better now for yeah. breathing? It feels better, yeah. There we go. It looks pretty good. It looks pretty yeah, damn good. good. Uh, which way? You got uh, All right. You breathing okay? Yeah, it's fine. All right, that's great. It's, it's warm, but it's, it's fine. All right. Well, I'm cold, so. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's not fogging up, which is great. Yep. This was in Iceland. Can you breathe directly on the lens, on the glass? Not that. Oh, uh, that's perfect. amazing. Yeah, that's yeah, great. Good. Now, if you, if I was to rub it with a, with a cloth, it would it would fog up in that area that it rubs. Oh, great. Um, what about cold? Fine. Yeah. Yeah, that was another thing. Like. The suit looks great, but we're gonna be at zero degrees out there. Dude, this looks fucking bad. Is this guy gonna freeze to death? Really I hope no one's looking at me. <laughs> yeah. So what we found, what we found, we've never done this before. So what we found when we, uh, I think we can, I can stop sharing that. Um, what we found is when when we took the suit out, it looked great. The the, the fog, we had anti fogging spray that worked great in the city. This is this the, the, that test drive is in in Iceland itself, or in this in the city was it, in Reykjavik. Um, and then we went out onto the glacier in the storm. Um, it's not quite the same. I mean, it, it, <laughs> it, it got so cold that super glue, the, it, it unsticks, it just falls apart. Super glue doesn't work. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I never, you never think to check the, the minimum temperature of glue. <laughs> <laughs> so literally had this prop that I built, the, you saw it in the images, that I, I, I built, painstakingly painted and put together, and it just fell apart in his hands. We had to tape it together to, to, to keep it together for the shoot. So I guess if you're doing a, you know, a high budget car commercial or something like that, you probably have somebody that you pay to make sure that the glue is... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <the glue> <laughs> well, we, you know, we were a very small team. It was like, well, how, many of, how many of us were there? Like, like... I mean, uh, the whole thing, crew, really. 15 like, people, maybe? 12? Right, five main crew, like, like around the shoot kind of thing. Like, it was very small. And and so, and we had backups. We had, like, what we ended up having to do was replace the visor um, uh, between takes. So we, I, I made five visors with, with the frame, and they could just pop in and out if they fogged up. So we had, we had enough backup plans to, in, in case of almost every kind of emergency, except for super glue falling apart. <laughs> Luckily, most of the parts snapped together, so th that wasn't really a problem. Anyway, I've been talking too long, so I think I, uh, it's uh, time for someone else to, to take the reins. All right. You, you did an awesome job, Rory. I remember that we had to get Rory the last plane ticket out of LA because he was still printing and painting when Mag, had already, Mag and I had already flown to Iceland. <laughs> last second. Yeah, yeah, it was very nerve wracking. He was like, I haven't. I haven't finished, and we're like, you're going to Iceland on November 10th. <laughs> so, well, well, maybe we need to explain that we ended up shooting ice in Iceland, which makes sense, right? The word is there because, well, first of all, the light in Iceland is like amazing. It's, and just being there, it's ha I mean, I don't know, it makes me happy. I've been there four or five times, it, it's really nice. And we tried to combine. Rory's film with Deal, the Japanese version, the Japanese uh, style one, um, tried to to film them in the in the in this, you know, one after another in Iceland, and uh, I, I, I as I said, light over there is amazing and landscapes. Everybody knows the landscapes, but to me, it's more most about the light. We've got a great team over there. Andrew helped a lot, and and it's just a beautiful place. I'm just going to go really, really quickly. This is how Deal, the Japanese sword we did, Japanese inspired, uh, that we did in Iceland, end up looking. And as you can see, for example, there's there's um, the warrior fighting to get her freedom. But you see all these amazing forests and the lighting and, and those flags. I was just going to go through. 
to what we did. We also used a lot of 3D printing. We made all those flags. We made like 150 flags. I don't yeah, know. That's my picture. Three <laughs> <laughs> were. Um, uh, we we had that uh, the daggers and the and the spears uh, 3D printed, which ended up actually. Rory, did we use like a rubber based um, type of material so that we would not murder anybody? Um, yeah, there was a, I, I, I printed a bunch of props for Mac too on his short, um, and so I had to print all these daggers, but uh, I had to print in flexible filament, uh, which is, it's not actually made of rubber, but it feels like rubber, and, and so when you stab someone with it, it doesn't go through them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should mention, sorry, I don't want to interrupt you, but I, 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 the, the person that really helped us so much on the costume was Aiden, Aiden on, on my costume was Aiden Vitti. Um, and she did an amazing job of, 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 of like, I, I printed the helmet and the backpack and a, and, a, and a device, but she created the whole rest of the costume and did an incredible job. Anyway, sorry, to, wants to... No, that, that's it. Yeah. And uh, for example, this is some stencil, is that the word? Stencil? Yeah. Like sure. that we used to make all those flags um, that, that you saw earlier, look, 41% down. Uh, but anyway, also we used, so through the printers a little bit to to make some of those props for the for the deal um, as well. It's so fun when you see um, cheap plastic look like hardened steel. Yeah, <laughs> <In the end. laughs> Movie magic, yeah. Uh, this is Alex, our actress, our main character shoulder. on the film, practicing in LA. And, and be like, oh, um, she did amazing an amazing job. So did Ryan and stay for, with the choreography. Yeah. But anyway, that was, that was, I wanted to saw the, some famous film, as you can see all those, like you see the blades over there, the, the head pieces on the flags, all of that 3D really printed as well. So, so that's a whole bunch of prep. And uh, also- Yeah, 99% nine, is prep and yeah. only 1% is shooting, right? Yeah. right? Yeah. Not, I don't know. No, I mean, yeah. uh, by the time we got to set, I was more or less exhausted from the prep, and then, <laughs> <laughs> and then the shoot, the shoot was almost like a reward from for all the work. I Maybe not everyone happy. feels the same way, but I feel kind of happy that I'm just in the beginning of pre-production because I get to let these guys go through and figure out all the. They're kind of like the guinea pigs with like <laughs> yeah. 3D printing and all that stuff. So I'm kind of like watching them and trying to think of what to avoid when we get into our film. Um, so oh, I just do you want to tell us a, a little bit about your film? Bye. 